Welcome to block 12 of the block of the week. My name is Krista and this is Krista So Crafty. This block is going to be fun. It's not real hard. I thought rather than ending on a, you know, real tough hard note, we kind of take it easy, but this is a fun one. This block is called the Monkey Wrench or the Snail's Trail. It takes two colors. That's it. That's all. Out of your background fabric, you're going to need one block that is six and seven eighths inch. You're going to need one block that is five and a quarter inch. You're going to need one block that is three and seven eighths. And you're going to need two blocks that are two and five eighths of an inch. That's what you need for your background. And you're going to need the identical numbers for your color. I'm going to use this kind of batik, I think it is. So that's what you're going to need to make this block. So let's get started. To begin, we are going to make a four patch. So you will need your two white two and five eight inch blocks and your blue, you'll need two of the two and five eight inch blocks. And we're just going to put them together into a four patch and we're going to sew them together. Very easy. We'll fold this over on top of here like that. Now you're putting right sides together and then we're just going to sew down here. We're going to use a quarter of an inch stitch with a 2.4 stitch length. Let's bring this in and stitch it down. And I'm just going to chain piece these together. Snip them apart. And we're going to press this top one to the dark side. I'm going to flip the material over this way so that the seam is behind the dark material. And then this one, I'm going to do it the opposite way. So it'll be going this way. And so now the seam on this one is going that way. And the seam on this one is going that way. Now we can fold these over on top of each other. Make sure that that's nested together. And then put that stick pin right down that seam line. Okay, let's stitch that down. And open this up. And this way, this time it doesn't matter which way these get pressed. So I will take it over to the iron and give it a good press. Once you have your four patch done, you can set that aside. And now we're going to take all of the blocks that are left and we're going to take and we're going to cut them on a diagonal. So each one of these will be cut corner to corner once. So diagonal cuts on all of these. Okay, so I'm back with all of my triangles. I've cut my blocks in half. I want to be 100% transparent with you. My very first block I put on was wrong and so I had to rip them all out and I'm starting over. So if you'll notice on my blocks I've got little corners cut off. This, don't do that to yours. That's just because I had gotten to the third level. That is when I realized that I had these blocks sewn on incorrectly. I'm still going to use the same blocks. I'm just going to be very careful with how I place them and make sure that I'm putting them in the right spot. Your orientation should be the white to the left and the dark to the right. Okay, so if you have it set like this, then your blocks will be correct. So this triangle needs to come up here and we're going to fold it over and I'm going to center this and make sure that this point is right on that seam line. And I'm gonna bring in my pins and I'm gonna pin this in place. And then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will sew this with a 2.4 stitch length and a quarter of an inch seam. I'm gonna pin both of the small white triangles on right now. And then that way, when I get to the sewing machine, I can just sew them together.
turn it around and stitch down the other side. I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press these flaps out. You want all of your seams to be going to the outside for this block. Just because there's going to be so many seams, it'll just be easier if you press those seams to the outside. I'm going to go do that and then this would be where you would trim off your little corners and then I will meet you back over here. We have our small white triangles on the top and the bottom. So now we need to put our small dark ones to the left and to the right. Again, I'm going to fold this over. Make sure that that point is on the middle. Line up the bottom and pin it in place. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. All right, we have everything in place. Again, make sure you orient your block, the white on the top left, which is where it is. And now we can bring in our medium blue triangles and we're gonna place them like this. So it should be curling around, right? Like that. If yours isn't, stop now and pick it out and start over like I did. If you watch what you're doing, you will be able to keep this block going the correct way. We are at this step now where the, the medium blues are gonna go here. I'm gonna fold this over like this. And here's where we want to make sure our point is going in the middle. Now we don't have a seam line coming up here, but what we do have is this block here. So we can make sure that this is in the center as best we can. So put your pins in. and turn it and we always put our block opposite to where we just put the other one so this triangle will go over here I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to make sure this is in the center and that everything is lined up and then I can put my pins in we'll go sew it and we'll come back and we'll do the same thing with the white ones Okay, we are making some good progress here. So have a look at your block and make sure that it's curling like that, okay? Now we need to take our large triangle and we're gonna put one on the top and one on the bottom. So I'm just gonna turn it and keeping everything in the right place. I'm gonna fold this over and again, I'm going to put that point right on this center line like this and make sure that's there. And then I'm going to turn this and we're going to put this block over here. Get it kind of oriented to where you need it. Get that point right on that line like this. And that laid down nice too far there we go and I'm just going to repeat exactly what we've been doing okay so I'm just going to trim off these little dog ears You can use a roadie cutter as well if you want to for this, but I'm just gonna use my scissors. Now we need to put these white ones on here and then our block is going to be done. Here is our block. I think it's pretty cool. I like how it does the the swirl or the curl I guess that right there is where we started right and then we follow this around it kind of looks like a wave to me so the monkey wrench or the snail's tail is kind of a neat little block to do but you do need to be very careful about 
your orientation of your blocks. And can you imagine a whole quilt done with this? I think it'd be very cool. And even more so if these were all in different colors. So this one was blue, that one was yellow, purple, pink, red. It would look very cool. And it'd be interesting to see what kind of pattern these here would make when the other ones met up with it. Do you know what I mean? Here's our finished block. It's oh so pretty. So as I lay this out here, it looks good. And it's 12 and a half, so that's fantastic. It's gonna be a nice addition to the rest of our blocks. And congratulations, we made it. We made it through all 12 of the blocks for the block of the week. I'm very proud of you. It's a lot to accomplish and it, it's exciting when you can get to the end of a project. I hope you enjoyed this block. It was such a fun one. A little challenging as far as, you know, making sure your, your swirls are going the right way. But other than that, it's a great little block. It would be so much fun to see this in a whole quilt. You know, um, this would be fun for a baby quilt. Absolutely. Do it in all different colors. You could actually do these swirls in different fabrics. So you could choose two blues, let's say, but have blue, one with blue that has like blocks or something and one blue that has um, circles or something. And then each one of these blocks would be the same color but different patterns. And then it'd end up being like a I Spy kind of quilt. I want to thank you for joining me over the last 12 weeks as we worked on each one of these blocks. Each block was different. I think each block presented something new and challenging. And I hope that you were able to maybe pick up a tip over, you know, the, all through the different blocks that we made. And I'm excited to see what, you know, you, what you're going to do with these. Next week, I will come on and I will discuss different ways that you can use these and maybe different ways that we can put these blocks together. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click on the bell to receive notification every time I upload a new video. Thank you again for joining me and happy crafting.